Hey, hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm doing a review here of Alchemy. This is Alchemy 1.5, um, 1.55 actually, and um, it is the current version. And uh, this is a very unique synth because it basically has uh, four different synthesis engines in it, uh, which are a virtual analog engine that gives you a variety of single cycle waveforms to choose from. And then there's an additive engine, which in theory is, is capable of creating just about any sound you can imagine by adding together up to 600 oscillators um, at the same time. And this synth actually has four banks here, four sources, and each one is capable of generating 600 oscillators. So as far as, um, you know, sheer number of oscillators available, I've never heard of a synth anywhere close. But what can you do with those oscillators? That's the important question. And you can do a lot with them. Um, and we might get into that a little bit. But then we also have the spectral engine, which basically allows you to take a picture um, or to change sound into a picture and manipulate that picture using a, a brush. Um, oh, well, using your mouse, but using like uh, drawing tools and things like that. So that's powerful and flexible. And then we have a granular engine. Um, if you're familiar with granular synthesis, it basically can chop up a piece of sound to a bunch of little grains and spread them across the um, kind of your stereo field or just kind of um, place them together so you get a continuous sound. And then you have this uh, filter section. Now this filter section is within one of these sources. And it's uh, in addition, you also have a filter bank. So you're talking about a huge amount of flexibility here. And each one of these um, filters, you can choose between one of these items here. These are filters. This is a kind of a format filter, um, peak notch, comb, ring, and some distortion algorithms. And each one of these can do this separately and you can put them in series or in par parallel. So that's an extreme amount of flexibility. And then we have our filter section and the list of filters in the filter section is kind of obscene. Look at all these. So that's pretty cool. So you're talking about a lot of power and a lot of flexibility, but wait, there's more. You also get, you know, as I said before, you get these four banks, each one of them capable of um, these four different synthesis techniques. And in addition, there is this uh, morph function and there's, there's different morph modes. And so basically when you think about, we're trying to figure out what this is. Um, I think it's especially interesting when you have the additive engine and you, you have an additively um, generated or, or you basically have analyzed a file and turned it into um, an additive setup which can be done fairly painlessly. You just go into um, like a sample here. Let's look at something here. Yeah, let's take that, why not? And then we go additive, and then we say import. And let's see what we get. So basically, we're recreating this sound with a whole bunch of uh, sine waves and that sounds a little bit crazed out if you take some more time you can usually get some yeah that sounds closer anyway so you can take um this sound and then i could go into b here and i could uh, load up something different let's see what we got oh we gotta import something actually and let's see what we got Let's try like something like this. Excellent. This is perfect. So we're going to import that. And now let's say we want to morph. Uh, we can go more linear, I believe. Oh, here we go. Let's try that. Let's see what it does. 
So now we have morphed into this drone and then we're into this thing here. So you can morph between two different sounds and this can of course can be automated. So like this, this probably isn't the most mu musically amazing example, but you get the idea. It can get crazy up in here. So that is a, a level of flexibility that you can't really get anywhere else. So it's, it's very unique and you know, I can't even really stretch the surface too well. There's a, a bunch of videos about how this stuff can work. So I probably shouldn't even bother telling you about it here, but in any case, You've got a lot of flexibility here. You've got a lot of power. You've got a lot of synthesis power. And the routing in this synth is pretty great. Um, if I want to modulate, um, let's say like uh, pitch right here, coarse pitch, why not? I want to modulate that with an LFO, um, bam, it's set up. And, and it's that easy. And that's a big deal for me because I like to make my own sounds and I don't want to have to dig through a bunch of menus and do a bunch of crazy, you know, jumping jacks and hula hoops in order to get something routed. And uh, this is very fast and it's very easy to understand. And it has these little halo things, these things right here, like um, also Massive has something very similar where you can see what you've, what you've routed and you can see the um, range in which it's routed right on the uh, main interface. And that should be just like standard, uh, mandatory for every synth. And then if I like change the depth, I can see it and I, and I know what's going to happen. That's awesome. That is um, beautiful. So um, that's great. And another thing I love about this synth is these um, the remix pad here. You can set up the macros here to modulate a bunch of different stuff. You turn this one knob and it can modulate one or more parameters. And you can set this whole section up, including these XY pads to change a sound all, all around up and down. Uh, let's just try one of those, you know what I'm talking about. If you, um, back in the day, and it was not that long ago, but if you ever heard of a core, core had a similar sort of a thing. In fact, I'm sure they straight took this from core, but it was cool there and it's cool here. So anyway, back to the review uh, this synth is extraordinarily powerful and easy to program, which is not something you necessarily find all the time. So that's a big deal. And it has this very nice and convenient remix pad. I've uh, mapped the the pads to like some controllers on my keyboard, so it's very easy for me to move that junk around. And it remembers those assignments, so it's always down to be controlled. And um, the versatility and the sounds you can get out of this thing is quite unique. It is one of those synths that can do some some things that you just really can't find anywhere else. So ultimately with this guy, I highly recommend it. I think it's great. Uh, I think that it's amazing, especially if you like, like sound design, basically if you're into sound design, you cannot afford to not have this. <laughs> you have to have it. Um, and if you are looking for something new and unique or something that can have a, a unique sound, or even something just easy to program, I, I can recommend this guy for you. Now, if you are looking for uh, one synth to rule them all, as far as like to get all of your different sounds, your realistic sounds and your synth sounds and everything like that, um, you know, this guy may not fit that bill for you. It has, you know, some some pretty good uh, acoustic sounds like guitars. Let's see what guitars it has here. Um, but mostly the sounds are going to be not as much realistic as they are just kind of cool. And um, uh, yeah, just, just this sounding unique and awesome and stuff. So 
Yeah, like... I mean, that sounds pretty cool. But that sounds weird. But that, that's pretty sweet. So if you, if you want some really cool, realistic sounds, acoustic sounds especially, you're going to want to get a sampler like Connect or something like that. Or, I'm mean, sorry, Contact. Um, but if you love synthesis and you love mangling sounds and making something unique, you kind of have to buy the synth. So that's pretty much my review of this guy. Leave a comment. Subscribe to my channel. You don't have to, but I'd love it if you did. And enjoy your day and have fun making music.